Okay. Okay. So here we are with Gengar. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about who you are as humans first, and then you can tell us about how you started playing music together. Okay. You well, have 30 seconds on the clock. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> um, my name is Jonas. Um, Jonas in the region. Uh, often Jones in, in English, actually. <laughs> Uh, but it's not the same name. My name is written with an A, not the E. That is probably the most important thing about me, I think. <laughs> um, just kidding. Uh, I play the bass, bass guitar, uh, mainly electric bass. But I just started playing a bit of uh, acoustic bass, upright double bass as well. I, I study uh, music pedagog ped pedagogics, how to be a music a uh, teacher at the, uh, the Norwegian Academy of Music here in Norway, in Oslo. Very cool. Yeah, hi, I'm uh, Matthias or Matthias or Matt or whatever you want to call me. Um, I've grown up in a folk music family with actually an American mom and a German dad. So that's a whole other story, but they both played folk music. And um, I started at an early age dancing and then when I was around nine, ten, I started playing fiddle and started with folk music and then played, started with the hard anger just a couple years later. And since then, I went to the Waldorf school in Oslo and that's where I met Jonas and yeah. we played together there. And then now I'm here at the Norwegian Academy of Music studying hard anger fiddle, actually. And um, cool. yeah, that's a little about us. I can also yeah. talk about the band a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, tell us about the band. How did you all get together to make Gengar? Yeah, so this started because we have like the student folk music festival and for one of the concerts we wanted to like set up something where folk music students would work with people from other genres and just like put folk music in totally different contexts and just go crazy. So I asked uh, Jonas here and uh, the guitarist Richard, who I went to the Waldorf school with, and then two friends I made here at the academy before Yuna started, Oscar on saxophone and Henrik on drums. And just say, hey, why don't we just try to do this? And then, mm -hmm. of course, the concert got canceled because of COVID. But then we had we always had like something to look forward to. So we kind of kept going, yeah. rehearsing and working at repertoire. And then finally, last summer, we played our first concert. And since then, we've been just going strong. and. Mm -hmm. Cool. Now we're finally gearing up for our release. We're dropping an EP yeah. at first single, 7th October, EP 2nd of December. So stay tuned. I think there's another single in between there some, somewhere. But yeah, that was my promotion for the day. That's yeah. awesome. Okay, you have to tell us about, I'm going to jump kind of all over the place, but we have learned, I feel like, this intimate part of your live show, which is the tree dance. Yeah. And we got to know, how did the tree dance come to be? <laughs> yeah. Um, so in Norway, we have this tradition, basically, where you draw på hittetur, or you go to the cabin with your friends. And I brought the guitarist Richard with, uh, with me to a, a cabin with a bunch of other friends I have, kind of from a different gang. But still, everyone knew each other. But this part of the gang likes hip hop. And... Um, Richard, the metalhead, had no idea how to dance to it. And he's also heard before that he's kind of a static dancer. So it kind of started with him. He was just standing there with his legs planted in the ground, just kind of waving around <laughs> to these like ultra heavy rap songs. Yeah. And uh, after a while, I think the name Tree Dance just kind of showed up. Mm. And then like, I think our second concert, like I dared to kind of like, well, the others were playing. I had a tuning break. I kind of stood there a little bit. And then the <laughs> third concert, the guitarist suddenly broke into this. And then the fourth, by the fourth concert, we had everyone in the audience like, raise your hands and blow in the wind. And it's kind of our calling card now of our yeah. live show. It's always funny watching like confused audience members, <laughs> like looking at each other, like, what, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> and, uh, so usually I'll try to signal for the tree dance by yelling, Kimber, and then, you know, yeah, that's so. The high funny. point of the tree dance was this summer in Estonia when we played for I think probably over two thousand people and all these Estonians 
They're just standing there, flowing in the wind. <laughs> beautiful sight. That was beautiful. Yeah. That is amazing. There's something wow. so special about that. Mm. Like seeing an entire audience that's there to see you just like absorb this thing that you guys have as a group. It's so fun. It's so Going fun. along with the flow, feeling it. Yeah. Nothing better than to get the audience to do weird things. That's really much fun. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <totally. laughs> I agree more. My music is all about sharing your weirdness yeah. <laughs> together in community. Yeah. yeah. Let us be weird together. <laughs> <laughs> Where did the name of the band come from? Before our name Gangar uh, occurred, our name was Gangar Stugutta, <laughs> which is um, not only uh, difficult in English, it's also really difficult to pronounce in Norway. <laughs> um, and that means the guys who play short tunes. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we got it from a. a um, uh, what is it called? It's not archive recording. Archive recording. Yeah. yeah. Where this guy says, now we're going to change the tempo and play a gangashtub. Yeah. And that was one of the tunes that we were working at. And then we were like, okay, well, I guess we're just the boys who play gangashtub. So gangashtub yeah. gutta. But then I think after a while, when we were like starting to like putting, put our feelers out mm. internationally mm. and just telling confused delegates what our name was, <laughs> We kind of realized that let's go with gangar. Yeah. And gangar means a walking dance. Yeah. It's a Norwegian type of dance. Yeah, so. traditional. Yeah. And also, our first concert ever, uh, the guy who, who introduced us actually roasted us for our name. <laughs> <laughs> right before he we went on yeah. the stage, he was like, I want you guys in the audience to make a list of yeah. potential names because this is kind of difficult. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you love when they do that? <laughs> yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. So it's we'll so always we'll always be Gunga Shibuta, but the ones who know who know. They know. Yeah. Okay, what else do we want to know about you guys? Mm. Well, I could say a little about the music that we play. Um we take <laughs> traditional <a> Norwegian great idea. <laughs> <laughs> we um we take Norwegian traditional tunes that we find in archives and just old recordings in general and then we rearrange them with influence from heavy metal, rock and roll, jazz, funk, pop, whatever we think sounds cool. So it's really how that works is like, we'll, we'll sit down and listen to a bunch of these old squeaky recordings. And then we'll pick out something that we like, and then I'll probably, I'll learn it on fiddle or I'll transcribe it or something and just get it in some kind of a format so you could import it into a, a DAW like Logic or Cubase or whatever, and then I'll just send it off, and then I get something back that's quite different with uh, you know heavy guitars, hard riffs, uh, solos, just so so usually it's like a three stage thing where we find the repertoire, we send it off so that people sit and arrange it, and I'll often be a part of the process there yeah. as well. We've worked out a lot of songs together. We live together, by the way. Live together. Sadly, <laughs> we do. <laughs> and, um, and then we take it to a rehearsal, and then we'll all kind of take this lump of clay and kind of mold it into something. And then it ends up sounding like gung and then, mm. yeah. then, then we're good to go. Cool. So when you're writing, like when you're arranging the music, you kind of just said this. So is everybody, you send off like this kind of root part of the song and then everybody gets to kind of go their own way with it or add like parts that they're moved to add or is one person or two of you more responsible for like charting and arranging things and then pulling those other players in so mostly uh Yulnas, richard the guitarist and i we do most of the arranging yeah. and um it, it, usually when we send a song off one person will work at one song while someone else works at another song mm -hmm. and um but then when we bring it to rehearsal, everyone has a voice and uh, and shapes this like, because I mean, it often sounds really bad in logic with like uh, your MIDI drums and all that. And then you kind of get a real picture of what it sounds like. And then we like, oh, how about this? How about this? How about this? Yeah. So it's a very sort of like, sort of natural and um, sort of flexible way of arranging, which yeah. is really nice. And, we're, and things are never really finished. We are and make changes after playing a couple shows with that song or especially when we recorded in the studio we had to really like 
take many steps back and yeah yeah what yeah. was that process like did you record like you went to a formal studio and kind of did it all together or did you work with any producers or anything yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next <question. laughs> so we went to this studio in in Halden, which is a small village a city in in norway uh right next to the swedish border actually um uh, it's a really really good studio uh with this great um technician who's called dog erik johansen who works there uh and he worked kind of like a co-producer and a technician it was really cool the main producer was um Kjell Erik Eriksson, who mm. plays fiddle with Hovendroven and Triakel, mm. who are both big bands in Sweden and in Norway. Yeah. And Hovendroven especially was important for us because they're our main inspiration. They're, they are, I don't know of any other like active bands that do what we do. They take Swedish traditional tunes and own things they compose themselves and then they rock that up. And mm. our first big show was at least warming up for them actually mm. which was really special mm. and so we've gotten a really close connection with them and you know we talk a lot about our processes and he helped us all along the way from when we were taking these arrangements that work well live but maybe not great on a recording so we had like these multiple weeks of where we would arrange or we would work at those tune and then we'd uh, record it and then we'd send it off to shell eric and um We'd listen to it for a week and we'd kind of think about it and then we'd come back, record it again and, and then do that. We did that, I think, three weeks in a row and then we right. went, to the went to the studio. Yeah, it was a really interesting process, kind of treating repertoire like that. I think we might have worked too hard at it, but I think it really ended up nice and uh, definitely good experience for future recordings we're recording an album in december so we're kind of like starting to enter that phase again mm. so mm. yeah it was really cool to to get to know like celerics um um yeah uh, um, experience experiences yeah yeah and and he had worked with the rock band and worked with folk music and, and a really nice combination of those two so it was really nice to hear how he did it with with uh, their band and uh, yeah, mm -hmm. learn a lot from it. It's yeah, that was really great yeah. because they're they're they've been playing for thirty years. We've been playing for two now, so <laughs> it's kind of like it's very supportive. There's no like um, there's no like competition or anything involved. It's really like building each other up. And it was his first gig as a producer as well, so that yeah. was really um, great for great experience. Mm. Yeah, that's awesome. What does it feel like to be playing like that traditional music? And do you, this is maybe this is a question might sound kind of like woo woo wee, but I'm super interested in it. Are you connected to that kind of ancestral traditional um, feeling comes through what you're playing? I know the vibe is probably very different because you're rocking it up, but why, why traditional music? And what is that? What is that connection like? From the beginning, this project was like, we're going to do that. So that was just like the vision from the beginning. Um, so I play tons of solo traditional stuff, mm. which I feel like gives me a lot of perspective when working on this. I, if, I feel this might be a little kind of controversial, but if you're going to use Norwegian folk music in a completely different context, I feel like you should really know what you're working with and like have that sort of root I have that solid foundation before you start branching out. Um, <laughs> no, anyway, <laughs> but um, so that's definitely helped me a lot. We try to do as little as possible with the tunes. Uh, like, so the melodies themselves won't change, even though they're really weird. Mm. Sometimes we've had to make some tough decisions, but yeah. like, hey, maybe we shouldn't have that extra beat because that messes up everything. Mm. So yeah. <laughs> um, we're starting to be a little bit more daring at that. But there's one has to be quite there. There has to be a lot of humility involved when yeah. using that repertoire because people are very traditionalist, especially in the Norwegian scene. 
So like if you change things that you better have a really good reason and you like, yeah. So you kind of have to make choices. Mm. Um, connect, definitely feel connected to the um, sources and uh, there's a lot of interest in there. I mean, you know, there's, it's try to respect it as much as possible. Yeah. At the same time, we're adding our own flavor and really doing our own thing. So yeah. It's really interesting for, for me and the guitarist and the, especially actually everyone in the band except for this. We, we'd never played any folk music before. We didn't know anything. Uh, so we learned a lot from, from starting this project and, and learned a lot from Matthias. And it, it, it has been really interesting to, to get to know it and try to like transcribe it or understand it and do it on your own instrument and, and with your own musical background. That's been really, really exciting. Absolutely. Yeah. So like yeah. a lot of the stuff we work on is not like A part, B part. You'll have like this uh, A motive and then a variation of the A motive and then a B motive, and then the B motive varied and then to the C motive. And then it's a very different structure. And it's really yeah. fun to watch the rest of the band kind of like go from total confusion to actually really understanding it. And yeah. most of the band members have now gone to folk music events and danced and are really learning and getting and investing time and are really interested in it which yeah. makes which is really important i think when we're doing this to kind of like not only give back to the community but just like really have genuine interest and in understanding what we're what we're uh, working with mm. so, yeah and, and we're really trying to to show people like myself and others in the band who never had heard uh, much uh, folk music uh, and, and try to, to spread it out and get people to know the Norwegian folk music. Yeah. It's cool that this is like, um, the idea is so, is so much bigger too than like, than you guys, you, you have this, this ancestral part, you have this like connecting people to to this like cultural folk music, it's it's cool to be able to be like um a, like a tether to mm. to that that history. What uh, what different um like where did the different band members come from? What are the musical backgrounds of the band members? Um, yeah, so I'm from more of a kind of soul and funk background, especially as a bassist. Uh, but I also really have grown up with like rock music and yeah, stuff like that. Mm, yeah, the cool. guitarist is definitely heavy metal background, mm, yeah. which is really fun. And um, a ultra jazzed um, saxophone player and a drummer who's kind of like a does everything, you know, a yeah. lot of rock, hip hop and stuff. So, mm, yeah. Very cool. And how are you finding, sorry, Ren, <laughs> how are you finding the recording? Like, where did they come from? Um, so my dad actually works at the archive. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll duck in there and just listen as much as we can. Mm -hmm. And then there's also a lot of recordings that were given out by the National Broadcasting Service yeah. uh, around the all through the 1900s of just old recordings and so you just kind of have to know where to look yeah. and then there's tons on spotify and wherever you want to look so it is yeah. yeah very cool where do you hope to take this project like what are your goals with this group um so so far we've mostly gotten into like folk music festivals and stuff but we did have a europe tour this summer and played in a at least in three, four different countries. Mm. And um, so we feel like we both work for an international audience because it's mostly instrumental music. And like, we even try to get audience members to sing in Norwegian, which is <laughs> really fun. Really that, fun. That, that, that's also, that also worked, which is mm. surprising. But, mm. um, and we also really want to branch into, or get into the rock and metal scenes and the larger pop festivals and all that. We're, mm. We're, we're aiming, aiming high. <laughs> That's great. That's cool. As you should. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. 
Oh, there's yeah. a lot of the standard in folk music nowadays, I feel like is um, to have a lot of various projects. Mm -hmm. And I just don't feel like I have the capacity for that personally, at least. And everyone does multiple things, of course, but like this has been like the project that we're just like gunning for and like really we're there's a lot of work that goes into it and luckily we have five very ambitious and motivated members that are everyone's doing their part and, that's amazing yeah, really fun and we, we've gotten, yeah so you know we've gotten a lot back from from our hard work as well and that's really really cool to see that it actually pays off yeah so, yeah really ambitious we're learning a lot too oh yeah it's just yeah great because oh, yeah. nowadays, you I mean you, you don't have a booking agent unless you're lucky. You don't have a manager or a <clears throat> PR uh, expert or whatever. Mm -hmm. So a lot of us we're just learning our ourselves. So yeah, really cool. That's amazing. Well, I hope that all of that, just all the good things that are happening, keep coming. And yeah, I. Fully agree. Hard work pays off. If you're putting your energy into it, you're going to get something in return. So October 7th is the single. Yes, That's right. December 2nd. 2nd. December 2nd is the whole EP. EP. Yeah. Cool. Looking so forward to hearing it. Can't wait. Thank you. Thank you. The EP is called The uh, Three Dances. Yeah. yeah. Oh, clever. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Great talking to you. Yeah. Nice to hear your stories. Who's okay? Who's the one that's always, always early? Stresses about being early. Yeah. That's probably me. That's we probably showed me. up at the airport three hours before takeoff once, yeah. I think. You okay. never know what's going to happen. I'm with you on airport. Airport yeah. travel yeah. always early. Yeah. yeah. yeah so oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. To, be, to be fair, the, the shitty part wasn't the three hours. It was just it was like six in the morning or something. But, right. uh, but we got all of our instruments on board and we only had to pay an extra 120 bucks. So. But uh, yeah, so but, um, it was yeah. worth wait. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Okay. Good idea. Let's do that again. <laughs> Good idea. Okay, so you unless you you are the stressed out about being early. Matthias, you're the diva. And okay, who cooks? Who cooks? Um it would be our saxophone player. Yeah. He okay. always makes really nice dinners when we're all together. We went to Germany actually and and uh, <laughs> that, yeah. then we, uh, we we lived in my my dad's house down there. Uh, we have like a his parents' house is still up there, and we still own that. So we went down there and rehearsed for a, about a little ten days or something. And then he made some really nice dinners. Nice. Any yeah. black cheese? No brown. No, no brown cheese. Brown no. cheese. Brown cheese. <laughs> Sad enough. No. That's why we go to Germany to escape from that. Yeah. Right. No brown cheese. No more Don't bring it with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that it's not that special to you. <laughs> no, actually not. It's it's funny, but it's not that good. It's not that good. Usually okay. that's the thing, right? It's yeah. like the things that people think that, oh, you're from Norway, you must love this, this, and this. Yeah. And it's like actually no. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> who's from here likes that. No, I, I, I can like, I'm thinking really about love it. like once a while, like on a warm waffle with butter it would be great. Or like we have like these thin waffles in Norway. That's kind of our mm. way of doing it. But we're also at least on a toast. Mm. It can be really good, but I prefer the yellow cheese. Mm. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think what kind of Canadian foods are like, you know, what you have to try when you come to Canada. Mm. I mean, we also eat reindeer, so I mean. Oh. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Is that, that a Swedish thing? Do in thing? Hmm? Sorry? Is, is reindeer a Swedish or Finnish thing as well? Or it's called a Swedish thing because Sweden, uh, Norway isn't Sweden actually. Yeah. So it's probably a Swedish thing, I think. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. I think it's just like in general, like there's a large Sami population in the north of Sweden, Finland, and um, Norway, and that stretches all the way mm -hmm. over to 
Russia, and um, there's still a living tradition there of keeping herds of reindeer and and eating reindeer and using all of it, you know. Mm. And um, I think a couple of Christmases ago, I actually made a reindeer steak for Christmas. Okay. It was because of was it we were celebrating in Norway, so mm. Mm. no turkey. Mm. No turkey. Huh. Mm. Yeah. What um, stereotypes do you folks have of Canadians? Come on, guy. Hello, <laughs> I mean, I want to talk so. Turns and <laughs> well, you know about. Uh, <laughs> okay, can guys. we take a screenshot? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Well, I'll, do it. I'll do it. One sec. Hold your poses. <laughs> okay, ready? Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> nice. Oh, <Go> rock. <laughs> okay, guys. Have an awesome Enjoy day. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. You, you too. too. Bye. Bye. Bye.